peace be with you. My name is Rodolfo Martin Vitancol, a Gemini. In this video, I will present to you how the books in the New Testament were chosen. There are hundreds of books that were written about Jesus within a century after his death, but only 27 of them made it in the New Testament. The four criteria used by the church to select the books to be included in the New Testament. First criterion, the book must have been authored by an apostle. Only the immediate apostles of Jesus have the authority to speak and write for him, and this authority is non-transferable. There are nine books in the New Testament that were written by the apostles, and they are as follows. First, the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew is an apostle. Second, the Gospel of John, the Epistles of John, and the Book of Revelation. They were all written by John, who is an apostle. Third, the Epistles of Peter. Peter is an apostle. In the New Testament, you will also see the 13 letters of Paul, namely Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Philemon, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus. But wait a minute. Is Paul an apostle? My answer is no. Paul is not an apostle. Paul is not an apostle in the strictest sense that he was not among the twelve personally chosen by Jesus. Paul only came years after the death of Jesus. Neither was he there to be picked by the eleven apostles to replace Judas Iscariot. So why did the church include the thirteen letters of Paul in the New Testament when Paul is not an apostle? The answer is because the church believed the claim of Paul that he is an apostle. In fact, Paul claimed that he was not just another apostle, but a super apostle set apart for the gospel of God, and that the gospel he preached was not of human origin, but received by revelation from Jesus Christ. And the church believed him. In the succeeding presentations that I will post after this, I will reveal to you the evils done by the church for including the epistles of Paul and the book of Acts in the New Testament.
second criterion. If the book has not been authored by an apostle, it must have been written under the guidance by the living apostles, or the author must have belonged to the larger apostolic circle. Six of the books that God included in the New Testament were not authored by the apostles, but said to have the guidance by the living apostles or who belong to the larger apostolic circle. These six books that were not written by the apostles are as follows. First, we have the letter of Hebrews. The author of Hebrews is unknown. Second, we have the letter of James. James, who is said to be the brother of Jesus, is not one among the twelve apostles. Third, we have the letter of Jude. Jude is not the same person as Saint Jude, the apostle. The letter was said to have been probably composed during the first quarter of the second century, well after the apostle Jude together with the rest of the apostles, was already dead. Fourth, we have the book of Acts and the Gospel of Luke. Luke is said to be the author of these two books, and he is not an apostle. Fifth, we have the Gospel of Mark. Mark is not an apostle. Third criterion, the book must have been written during the apostolic era or in the first century, possibly before 70 AD. By using this criterion, the letter of Jude should have not been included since, as I've said a while ago, some scholars believed it was composed during the first quarter of the second century. In the succeeding post I will make after this, I will reveal to you that some of the epistles in the New Testament were not really written by the said apostles, but were forged. Why did the church allow the epistles to be forged? I will answer it in complete detail in the posts. Fourth criterion. The writings must have been universally accepted. The church believes that the people can recognize what is divinely inspired and what is not. The problem with this criterion is people can be deceived by false teachers and false prophets that even people of great intellect, such as the so-called Bible scholars, can be fooled. For instance, up to now, how many Christians, together with the so-called Bible scholars, still believe that the Yahweh of the Jews and the Father of Jesus are one? and the same person. Second, up to now, how many Christians and the so-called Bible scholars believe that Paul's teachings did not turn Jesus upside down? Third, 
third, up to now, how many Christians and the so-called Bible scholars believe that church membership is a prerequisite for salvation? Four, up to now, how many Christians and the so-called Bible scholars still believe that for as long as you regularly go to church, you're doing your obligation to God. Fifth, up to now, how many Christians and so-called Bible scholars still believe that tithing is mandated by God, that if you don't give tithes, you are robbing God. Indeed, compulsory tithing is in the Old Testament book of Malachi. But are they in the lips of Jesus? Six. Up to now, how many Christians, together with the so-called Bible scholars, still believe that faith alone shall save even without good works. Seven. Up to now. How many Christians, together with the so-called Bible scholars, still believe that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Faith, up to now, how many Christians, together with the so-called Bible scholars, still believe that Jesus came to die on the cross, that by His death we are saved? Instead of that, Jesus came to bring fullness of life to the world, that by His death He proved His commitment to His mission of life for the world. Nine, up to now, how many Christians, together with the so-called Bible scholars, still believe that only the Christians will be saved? Instead of all those who are doing the will of God. Lastly, up to now, how many Christians, together with the so-called Bible scholars, still believe that Jesus is also God, like His Father. Instead of Jesus being the Son of God, with His Father as the sole Almighty One in heaven and on earth. In the end, the believers of God are not really product of their faith in God, more than product of the brainwashing done upon them by their false teachers and prophets in their respective churches who are doing it with hidden agenda in their hearts. Amen. If you want to see a new light, a light that you have never seen before, may I invite you to subscribe to this channel and walk with Jesus all the way to making His mission of life happen in our world. We owe it to our children and the children of our children and all of the succeeding generations to come to make this world a most beautiful and happy place for everyone, especially the poor and the oppressed among us, whom Jesus calls the least of his brothers and sisters.
in the name of God, through His only Son, Jesus, I wholeheartedly thank you for viewing this video presentation. May the Spirit of God be always with you.